So, uh, okay. okay guys, tonight was meant to be the day we were going to go back to the hall, but instead it's returned to Zoom. <laughs> Such a shame, because particularly because Brian and Cliff had worked so hard and they made this amazing gantry with cameras on it and two TV screens. And we, had it, we went there and it's all working fine and we were hoping to show it tonight, but things are as they are and uh, it'll just have to wait. And I was going to say welcome to Brian, who should be in Portugal, but we've already done that one. Welcome to Lily. I don't know if she's here, but she's going to join and she's uh, going to be our second lady member. So hello, Lily, if you are here. Um, if not, you're welcome anyway. Uh, tonight, as we all know, Terry will be turning mushrooms and tops, just as he did for the various craft fairs that we've been to. The kids love it. We can He can knock out a top in two minutes, and it's a really lovely thing to do, especially for the kids who get to colour them. So uh, there we go. Um, it's over to you, Terry. The next, just before we go, I say the next meeting is on October the 7th and Martin Saban Smith, he's a professional turner, will be demonstrating, not sure what, but uh, putting your diary, it's the next Zoom meeting, first Wednesday in October. Okay, Terry, over to you. Look forward to an interesting okay. session. Okay. Um, right, well, uh, first of all, I'd say that years ago when I did these for craft fairs, um, I would make one, spin it on a plate, and make the next one before it stopped spinning. Um, David said two minutes. I don't want to be timed today, though. I'm not as quick as I was. Um, now, there's various ways to make tops. There's various types of tops. Um, I'm going to show you what I make, which is very simple. Turn in a chuck at one setting uh, and pass it off. And uh, What's important is, well, there's about three things I think that are important on the spinning top. One is the point needs to be sharp, fairly obtuse, but a proper point, because if it's um, distorted, if it's off center, it won't spin properly, it'll jump about. Um, therefore, you need a fine grained wood uh, that will take a point and a hard wood too. Um, the, Center of gravity on the top needs to be low, um, clearly. Um, and the spindle, the, the bit that you spin it with, needs to be thin. Most of the tops I see, the, the handle part is, is thick. And they are okay and they do spin. But you get much more speed out of the thing if you make the stem about matchstick diameter. So that's what I'll try and do today. Um, and I'm going to start with, uh, a piece of an old curtain pole. These are the bits I use um, at the craft fairs. And here's one. And I'm going to put it in the chuck. <coughs> and I don't need the tail stop for this. So can you all see that? Can you all see it? Yes. It's so, visible on screen. Okay. Anyway. Now I'm going to start by truing up the wood. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is make the point, and I do that with a skew chisel. And first, I, I keep the peel cut. And now I'm going to 
now I'm going to make the a curve on the underside of the top. This is going to be the point. Now I'm using the point of the chisel. Clean up that little shoulder there and now make the point itself the same way. Now that's all done with the, the long point of, of the skew. If you touch the, the shoulder of the, the bevel there against the turned surface, that gives you enough stability that you can actually use the edge, the cutting edge. To make that that last cut there if you find that easier but that's all right it's got a point on it um and uh i'm happy with that Gary, so, Gary, yeah? i'll tell you something uh the light is very bright and we can't see the detail of what you're doing yeah okay. i was just thinking that very thing myself actually. uh can you turn that one off turn it off where does it turn yeah. here yeah. is that, is that better sir? How's that? A little. Not, not very good. Uh, how's that? So it was better as you had it just a second ago. Like that? How's that? Terry, Terry you're moving around in the light that's uh, causing the problem. So when you're in one position, it's okay, and when you're in another, it's not. So I guess the light's from behind you. That's the problem. No, no it's not. It's. Uh, I've got a light above, that's this okay. one. Another one, which I can remove like that. Is that any better? <laughs> no, it's um, the light the... above, I think. Try, try the light above, take that out if you can. Yeah. Oh. That was... Is that better? Yes. But whether it's good enough, I can't tell you. <laughs> Bring the tool to the piece and we'll see. Would it be better if you heard it like that? Well, I can't see oh, oh okay. sorry, that's no good. Is that better for you? Yes. No, oh, well, I can't see what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> this one this back. One, though, yeah. How's that? I think that's better than it was. What do people yeah. think now? Better? I agree, it's better than it was. Good enough? Try it with the tool, let's see. Okay, well, the next job is to clear a bit of space for the stem using a parting tool. How did that go? It's still a bit whited out. Ah, um, adjust this one. Yeah, turn that on. That's better. Better? Is that enough light for you, though? Just about. Mm. Um, okay, can I... How's that now? Not so good. Not so good. Okay, so definitely like that. Yeah. Better? I'll yeah. just about make out what I'm doing. Yes, um, that's good. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I've roughed out the stem here, and you don't want that too thin at this stage because you'll get too much whip on it. But... Um, you tackle it in stages. So I'm now going to do the upper surface of the top. You want to see it? And this is an opportunity to tidy up the edge there if necessary. Now I'm going to um, use this. I'm going to use a spindle gouge to um, narrow this down the stem. A small gouge is good for this. And I'm going to just tidy up that little fillet.
And at this stage, um, at a craft fair, uh, we get the kids to come round and colour it. That's okay. And now with the point of the skew chill again, I'm just going to make a little V cut at the end of the stem. Is that going to be visible on the screen, Dover? Oh, uh, yes. Right. And I want to make a, a clean cut there, then it will spin upside down. <laughs> And you make it as thin as you dare, and it comes off. Now I shouldn't have let it drop because it can damage the point. What I usually try and do is, is cut it almost through and then just pick it off. So where are we? That's all right. So, so can you see this? <sighs> I can't hear what you're saying. You there? Have we lost them? Terry, we... Terry does it help if the uh, top is heavier or does it need to be quite light? Well, heavy is good because it's it, you get more momentum in it, but um, it's, it has to be proportionate to the diameter of the stem. Um, I find this size, which is, what's that, about 30 millimeters or something like that in diameter, seems fine and they spin on for quite long enough. Um, but uh, if you made them heavier, that would work. You just have to make the stem a little thicker. Right. Um, you can make them in two pieces. A lot of people do that. They make a disc, even put chatter work on it, something like that, and then insert a stem. Um, you can do it the other way about so that the stem is this end at the tailstock end, but it's hard then to part it off cleanly and you must have a clean point. Um, but you so see, you've then got another piece to make a second one.
That's <coughs> two tops. I used to sell lots of those, and we do at the craft fairs um, with uh, all the kids. The kids love it, don't they? Don't. Mm. So that's the spinning tops. Any questions on that? Any questions? No, it looks good. Don't forget, everybody's been muted. So if they do right. want to say something. Right, <laughs> yes. <coughs> so expertly done, we don't need to question. Yeah. Terry, could I just ask you about your chuck jaws? You've yeah. got some very deep jaws there. Do they grip yeah. all the way down? They do. They're serrated on the inside. Um, I don't know if you can... Get, yes, get I can see very well there. Yeah, yeah. Same good. inside as on the outside. They're called shark jaws. Um, I, I've got uh, one, two, three sets of these in different sizes. Um, and I use them all the time. What They're chuck have you got there? This is a small vit mark. Mm, so I don't think my Sorby jaws are the same, are they? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think other makers do do similar things. Yeah, um, Sorby, Sorby do a, do jaws that are long reach but are smooth yeah. inside. There's the exactly. O'Donnell jaws, isn't there? Um, for, that Axminster to do. Um, yeah. They're good. A, a, something that holds a cylinder. Mm -hmm. um, it is much more secure. If if you have a, a cylinder and you hold it on a dovetail like that, mm. there's much more whip in that. Yes. Mm. If you hold it like this, it braces it all up. Yes. Because I yes. I seem to remember somewhere that the the Brian might know this. The uh, rigidity <coughs> of the cylinder goes down with the fifth power of the length or something ridiculous yeah. um, so it is important if you're working on the free end of something to, to have it held securely sharp mm. jaws yeah dark jaws for the vic mark i've got uh, a larger set here same thing um, these are not serrated on the outside they do hold a dovetail recess but they are serrated on the inside. I don't know if the serrations help, to be honest, um, but the, having the cylinder grip is, is quite useful. Okay, right, now. Um, what speed What speed are you running the lay there? Uh, whoops, over 2,000. <laughs> That was 1925. So a couple, couple of thousand would be right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, the faster the better for small items, of course. Um, I know what Tom was saying earlier. Um, one one well-known turner, is it, was it Stuart Batty or someone like that, said, um, the best speed for turning is just short of suicidal. <laughs> short of vibration. <laughs> It, the turning goes usually goes better when it's faster, but it's, it, it gets too exciting when it goes wrong. <laughs> well, according to my um, lathe's equation, um, if you've got a three centimetre piece, 25,000 uh, divided by three, uh, you could be turning at 8,300. Yeah, <laughs> sure you but you've got to think of the chuck. They have a maximum race of speed. <laughs> yeah, so does your lathe, I think. Yes. <laughs> You can get to 8,000 in my life. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of headroom, that's the point. Yeah. Um, okay, well, shall we uh, do a mushroom? Yeah. Um, okay, well, there's, yet again, there's lots of ways of doing mushrooms. You see them um, with uh, a bark rim and a bark root. I don't like those, personally. Um, you can see them with um, a very tall uh, cap 
on the mushroom. So the mushroom it comes in and then goes up in a great dome, which I think looks bad, personally. Um, and you see them with a ball at the root, or almost a ball. I don't like those either. What I prefer is a stem, uh, fairly, not too thick, not too thin. Um, and I, I do them between centers. You can do them entirely in a chuck, but the way I do it is between centers. So I put the drive center in. That's the sort of shape I'm, I'm aiming for. Ignore that, ignore that. This is only part finished. But you see it's got a stem, fairly thin at the top, um, and uh, a bark edge cap, but not a great dome on top, which shows some people um, favour. So what you need is a short bit of a branch, um, cut fairly square, at least at the headstock end, the drive centre end. If that's cut crooked, it's easy for it to come adrift from the, from the center. I center it by eye, so it's more or less in the center of rotation, and bring up the tail stop. Up a three inch diameter. This is, oh, yeah, I suppose about um, two inches to four inches works fine and give it a spin you want it not too far out of center out of balance um, you can do that you can have have bits sticking out and they make an interesting shape for the mushroom they're a little more challenging to turn if you've got this sticking out and i don't think they look as bad uh, as good if, if you look at real toadstools they don't have great lumps <laughs> sticking out the side so you want the this is going to be the cap at this end. You want that to be running fairly true, but not perfectly true. You don't want it perfectly circular. Tighten up. And that will turn all right. Um, now, the, next, the first job I'm going to do is to form the top of the cap. And I find the best tool for that is a small bowl gouge. Now, this is a quarter inch bowl gouge. I don't know if you can see that. Um, with a not excessively swept back edge. Um, that's ground at about 45 degrees, I think. And just a few cuts will, will start to shape that. I should have said this is fairly wet. This, this wood. <laughs> um, I, I usually make them for wet wood because you can get wet branches. Or dry branches are harder to find. Um, so that could be any shape you want. Enough of a, a bit left here, enough to, to clear the point of the uh, uh, tail centre, which we'll do later. But actually, I'll take that a little smaller. Now um, I'm going to do a parting cut just back from, from the edge of the cap.
and I've taken that down to what's that about um, 20 millimeters in, in the <laughs> core there depending on the size of the piece um, but that's not the finished diameter this is just roughing out now I'm going to clear away some of this part now this is where some people will cut in with a detail spindle gouge and leave a bark rim at the foot as well a lot of people do that they like it i don't like it but there's nothing wrong with doing that obviously you can also um make a, a bulbous sort of shape to go at the bottom of the of the stem if you wish but i'm going to use an ordinary spindle roughing gouge well i say an ordinary one i, I like a shallow spindle roughing gouge most people have a u-shaped one i'm sure that works just as well <laughs> going to make it thinner than that but while it's still got some meat to it I'm going to do the critical stage on this which is the underside of the cap <coughs> that is what I think makes or breaks the mushroom most people would keep um, use a parting cut and have this off center and the result is and I'm sure you've seen them on these mushrooms you'll get a great thick bit at the rim on one side and a very thin bit at the other side and I don't think that looks good so the important thing is that you cut in on the underside at the same angle as the top at least until you're inside the bark um, and I think actually I'm going to make another little cut here to make that clearer Okay, so the important thing is, I've actually made it worse for you. The important thing is that there's a, an angle here. So not going straight in here, but um, before I had it too much of an angle. The important thing though is on the underside where you have to follow that angle. Now I, when I used to make a lot of these, I would use my special mushroom tool, which is, I think I showed it before when I did the Christmas trees. Um, it's an ordinary scraper, bit of high speed steel off eBay and a, a grind at the end like that and that lets you go in scraping in here but you can do it with a skew chisel um, so perhaps that's what i'll do because you'll have one of those maybe. scraping with the skew line up the tool to be parallel to this part here and that way you get the shape. Now this way 
the rim is equal all the way around, but it's wavering. It's, it's not perfectly circular. There's an undulation in it, but it's even, or more or less. And I think that's, that's uh, quite an important step. Now, um, this is wet wood, and I'm not going to finish it today. What I do is um, I form a spigot on the end, which will be held in a chuck in a day or two's time when this is dry and they dry very quickly. And then I can cut that off, sand it, and finally cut the spigot off and belt sand the flat on it so it'll stand. Sorry, I'm not feeling very well. Was that Lily? Hmm. Ready to carry on in just a minute. Okay. How do you, why does the top waver? Is it, would it not be really absolutely parallel all the way around? It wavers because you've got an angle to it. Um, I don't get that. The top uh, goes in at an angle. It's not perpendicular. It's not going straight into the, to the yeah. stem. It's, it's angled. If you follow that angle on the other side, hmm. then any variation in diameter the, the widest parts will be a little further up the slope. Oh, like a natural edge bolt? It is like a natural edge bolt, yes. Yeah, and, oh, okay. I get um, that. Yeah, so if you go straight in, um, you, you do get an even thickness. Um, do you? You can do, it depends on the shape of the wood, but if, if there is variation in, in the diameter which there always is on a branch and you go straight in you'll find it's thicker in one place than another mm. anyway what I'm going to do now is make this spigot So that is for the chuck to hold, and this, um, I've, I've made the spigot a little smaller than the stem. That's to give, the, give you a surface for the, um, for the stem to, to rest against on the, in the chuck jaws. It's not critical. But now I can finish the stem there. You can't actually see what I'm doing on that side, so let me move the Where are we now? 
That's about as far over as I can get it. That's good, you see. Yeah. So I'm now, I've, I've roughed out a shape there. I've got that last little bit to get rid of, which I'll do going back to the skew chisel. Um, using my little scraper is better for that job, but the skew will do it. And I'll reduce the the, uh, the the back again. Right now, I do a little bit of sanding at this stage. The wood is wet and it doesn't sand very well. It depends, some, some better than others. But I'll give it a, a quick go on the stem and the underside. I don't worry about this, this stage. So, 180. Terry, do they use splitters they dry sometimes? What was that? Do they split when they dry? Hardly ever, because the cap is thin. Right. Having said that, this one probably will, but they hardly ever do. <laughs> I don't like the I don't like the uh, this little lump there. For sanding, um, I run the lathe in reverse, um, hmm. so I haven't got to worry about moving the tool rest out of the way. Um, also, I usually have the extractor here and the dust will go away and straight up the pipe. So that's the turning done on that. So this would now take a day or two to dry. And here's one I made out of some beach. So I'll just show you how I finish it. Now, if, if it would go back in the, in the three centers, you could sand this, um, but you can't really get rid of that. So what I do is put in a chuck. This is my um, ancient Axminster four jaw self centering chuck. This, is, this was the last word in wood turning chucks before the dovetail jaws were even invented. Um, so, a 
That goes in there. Up against the, that bit. So that's been sanded. It's a little textured now because it's dried. Same here. I, I normally leave that, but now I want to sand this. I want this to be smooth. Oh, let me catch it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, yeah. Yes, I'm going to go in. Can you manage that? Yes. Okay, I'll stop. Yes. Sorry about that. So, I want this upper surface to be smooth. No, shut it. Smooth and polished. Um, as a contrast to the slightly textured surface here and underneath there just takes its chance. So I power sand it if it's not too distorted. It's cool there. So dry now. What I'll do in practice is knit that off on the bandsaw. This is 120 grit. Let's turn the speed down a bit more. Right. All I would need to do now is cut off that spigot on the bandsaw and belt sand a flat bottom, nice and flat. Um, you could belt sand this at an angle um, to just a little bit for appearance sake, but um, depends on, the, and also to restore any balance that you might have a problem with. Um, but normally it's just straight on the belt sander um, and there's hardly anything, it's hardly band sawing that off, it's hardly anything to remove from the sander. So that's done, one mushroom. Mm. Any questions on that? You finish it with anything? And, um, I uh, give it a coat of Danish oil. Right. And then I would buff on the, you know, the buffing kit on the top surface, that's all. And that's got a, a wavy edge, like a real one might have, um, but it's pretty uniform going round. I, I took more care on another one. Um, 
I haven't done these for ages, actually. Would you bother color, coloring the underside, the gills side? You certainly could. Because um, we did that once before, I think, in the old place. Did we? Well, <laughs> I can't a remember. dark color, like a real mushroom. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, you certainly could do that. You can also, it's very easy when you're cutting the stem to leave a little frill of fibers near around there somewhere yeah, which yeah. toadstools often have um, but that makes the sanding trickier. Terry when you were sanding were you in reverse? Yes. What stopped your chuck from coming off? <laughs> it's a bloody great chuck. It's slow speed and it's tight but you're quite right and, and uh, Dave Gerald knows very well. Um, lock the spindle and make sure it's tight, tightly screwed on and then it will not come off in sanding or at least it never has for me. Um, you can't turn in reverse of course but uh, uh, that will break the, the uh, um, break the thing loose on the thread but I've never ever had it come loose through unthreading when sanding. Okay. Once or twice it has come loose um, when I was turning something too big and too heavy and it sort of unwound itself and its own momentum. But um, that, that's uh, something I'll watch out for now. Right. Would different woods like laburnum give a more interesting finish? Well, they would. Um, I find the ones I like best are the holly. Holly, uh, nice and white. Um, uh, I don't know why that is, it's got a good texture. Um, this one is beech, um, Mill Hill beech. Um, oak works well, um, laburnum certainly would, but, but if you've got a ring of sapwood and a, a dark colored spot in the middle for, for the heartwood, does that look natural? I don't know, you decide for yourself. Mm. Um, Artistic license doesn't matter. Yeah, well, that's right. There's, right. there's everyone's got their own design, their own preference. Um, but uh, um, these are popular at the craft fairs. I've, I've sold loads of these over in the past. Um, it took me longer than it would normally do because I had to grind away that that spigot thing at the, at the tailstock end. Oh, and you, by the way, you don't want wood that's got a pith because that, that tends to look a bit funny. Um, is it end grain or cross grain? It's end grain. It has got the pith in the sense it, that's the circular, it's from a branch. Um, yeah. But some wood has got a hole down the center, hasn't it? Filled with soft uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't I mean, want that, especially on the, uh, if you put your tailstock into it. So you're... So, Tailstock not in the center, not on the pith, somewhere else. Um, yeah, but then you still see the pith, um, and uh, well, you have to decide for yourself whether that's a problem or not. You don't want to be taking the pith. No, exactly. But Terry, is the point that you've picked a piece of wood with a very small pith? Is that what you did, or did you actually position the, the tailstock to miss the pit? Um, well, I wanted the, the tailstock to be in the centre of rotation. Now, that might or might not be the centre of the growth rings. Okay. It didn't matter. It didn't, it's not critical. Okay. If it's a little off, it can look, look perfectly good. If it's wildly off, oh, right. then it looks really distorted. When, when you finished it. Um, so that's why I've, I put it between centers and just give it a spin, see if it's more or less balanced at this position, which is what about a third of the way down or a bit less. Um, at this end, it doesn't matter. So if I've got a branch sticking out, um, a big knot, I put that at the bottom end and turn it away. But each piece is different and, and there's no reason why you couldn't um, have 
bits sticking out and, and dead patches and knots on the top all um, adds character doesn't it anyway that's one way to make a mushroom other people will put it between uh, in a chuck and turn the whole thing including turning the point off there um, you couldn't do that safely on a chuck like this but the modern chucks are, um, are better um, and as I said earlier you can have a bark foot a ring there um, if you choose I don't like those but but uh, a lot of people do it that way so why not do the whole thing on a chuck rather than between centers um, for access Hmm. You, you've got to, uh, you, if you're going to put it in a chuck and it starts off as a branch, you've got to form some sort of spigot there for the chuck to hold. So you're going to be between centres at some point, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's the time when I make the shape as well. But other people would. They cut the spigot, put that in the chuck jaw as a modern chuck and make the mushroom. But you haven't got the, um, necessarily got the position just where you want it then, to get the balance. Mm. So this one is, can you see that there's a bit oval shape, potato shape, you might say. That would work perfectly well. But others, um, if you had a, a, a big knot there, a lump on it or something, I don't think that would look so good. To my eye, anyway. Mm -hmm. When you Very did good. sell them, did you do them by sort of batch turning to sort of 20 or 30 years ago? Oh yes, I would, I would make bags and bags of them. And I, at one time I sold them on my website. People would buy three as a go. I'd, I'd make a large, a medium and a small and people would buy three. Um, you don't get much money. You don't get very rich on them. <laughs> Anyway, that's how I do them. Has anyone else made a mushroom that, that uh, would, would prefer a different way? I think I've tried to make one a little while ago now. Yeah. Could we see the profile again of your special tool turning paper. the inside? Yes. Um, this is the small one I use. That's See is that about six millimeters square? I've got another one, rather bigger, um, which is good for the bigger mushrooms. But the, the profile is just curved back like that, ground as a scraper, with a little bit of clearance on the underneath. Can I don't know? If, can you see that there? Because mm -hmm. that's got to fit um, in there. And, and you don't want a sharp corner at the bottom rubbing on the, on the wood. So you relieve that a little bit. Um, you can also put a little bit of a re relief. Can you see this? Can you see the shape? No. It's very indistinct. Very indistinct. Well, I'm waving about. Can you see it now? No, it's almost off the image, Terry. There? <laughs> A bit of the right position, yeah. Right. Give us a background. Um, it's yeah, an that's... angle angle with a curve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now if you if you give it a little relief there, can you can you see what I'm doing there? Just grind that off there at the long point, just a little. That lets you go round a curve on the underside of the cap. So that you will be cutting cutting in and following a curve like mm. the skew chisel can't do that so well which is why I, I actually use these in preference also you can when you get to the center when you get to the center of the mushroom I hope you can see this you can actually put it you do a bevel rubbing cut to clean into the corner which um, is hard as, you can do it on a skew, 
but this does it very easily. So although it's a scraper, you, you ride the bevel and, and put it at an angle and you can slice along there to improve the shape. Because I think this is not a good example, but the shape of these, the fine points of the shape are very important. Um, if you want it to look, I hesitate to say look natural because they're not natural, are they? You won't find one really like this. But if you want it to look realistic is the wrong word, it, you won't get it to look like a real mushroom, but you can make it look like a natural growth. If you pay attention to the shape, no lumps and bumps, get the angles right, decide on the proper thickness of here, don't have this too fat and thick, although you do want some width there so it doesn't fall over. Um, and you get your eye in and, and I don't think I would say that's a very good one. Um, I used to do them, if, if I'd done a few more as practice that would come back to me. You want, you want a branch that's not perfectly round, you don't want a curtain rail or a curtain rod. Exactly. If, um, if it gives you, if it's not perfectly round, you get a nice bark uh, edge to it. Exactly, but it's, it's a matter of degree. Um, oak comes out nicely and, and that's got more bark and it, it tends to be a more gnarly sort of shape. But the, the bark is always brittle. On a lot of woods you can actually take the bark off like you do on a natural edge bowl and it still looks okay. Um, but the important thing is it's not too far off circular. Mm. Is that beech you got there? This is beech, it's a, a branch off uh, Tom's Mill Hill tree. Right. And uh, just to show you just to show you I've, I've been uh, busy that's a stack of bowls I've made out of that beach Tom wow roughed out <laughs> well, you, you done at night Terry <laughs> <laughs> no that's about two, two afternoons there but um, the stack of the stack of shavings um, you, you could probably see from from outer space <laughs> That's amazing. Well right. So, unless there's any more questions, I think that's it, isn't it? Can, can I show you uh, some features of a mushroom that emphasise what you've been saying? Yeah. Can you see that? Hang on. Yeah. Let me put this back. You see how bulbous that bottom is? not very natural. No. And also, you see the, the thickness of the top there? It's all open because it wasn't undercut at the same angle. It wasn't what? Undercut at the same angle. Yes, yes. Um, the angle of the underneath side must match the angle of the top until you get, in, get through the bark at least. Then you can change it. Um, and the bulbous bottom like that gives you a low center of gravity it's it makes it more stable it wasn't round <laughs> no this is not one of mine by the way i don't know where i got it from but oh it's... yes <laughs> 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 but if you look on youtube or on uh, google images for wooden mushrooms there's some examples that are really shocking you know terrible things um you wonder how people pay anything for them <laughs> hmm. Do you dye them or colour them? Um, I have occasionally coloured the top. Um, I coloured one or two, a sort of dull greeny colour. Um, there, are, there are toadstools that colour. Um, you could do red, uh, whatever you want. Um, yeah. But I prefer the, the um, pale coloured plain wood. Holly is great. Um, uh, what else? The beech is nice. Oak is good. Um, yew is all right, um, but it, it's a bit too garish, yew, the ones I've made. Although you get, have fly agaric mushrooms, don't you? Toadstools are bright red with white mm. spots on. So uh, you, you can put colour on. 
Yeah. And another thing, if, if you make them, make them with thin stalks, some people would drill holes in a, a gnarly old bit of branch and stick them in, uh, like a, as if they were growing there. I've never done that, but it, it can look all right. You can also um, make the caps separate and put in um, a, a separate stalk and even steam bend the stalk. So, so the thing is at a funny angle, you know? Mm. But all that is uh, just a lot of work, isn't it? Can you make omelets with it? <laughs> it's a bit crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Julian. Good evening. Sorry I was well, late. Not at all. Nice to see you. How are you? I'll be now. very pleased when Rosh Hashanah is over. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Do we have anything else on the menu tonight? Not tonight, but can I remind people that on Wednesday the 7th of October, we have a demonstration by Martin Saban Smith. Right. Um, he was due to come and talk to us tonight at the hall but didn't want to risk the journey and then venture out. That was before all this six and six law came in. But we did agree that he would do a remote demonstration and he's free, he was free on Wednesday, the 7th of October. So, so we got him the, the, the first Wednesday, first Wednesday of October. First Wednesday of October. Yeah. And it'll be a Zoom. It'll yeah. be via Zoom. Yeah. Um, I don't think we said thank you to Terry for a really fascinating yep. evening. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, I'm going to try making one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or two. Terry, well, is that the smallest thing you've ever used, made on your lathe? Sorry? Is that the smallest thing you've ever made on that huge lathe? <laughs> no. no, certainly I've made smaller things than that. You can make small things on a big lathe, not the other way about. Yeah. True. We had needle, one. needle cases. Yeah. Spinning top. Um, I've made miniature metal spinning tops in aluminium, which you can turn. Um, made little uh, bits out of bone and lignum vitae and things like that. So Tom, do you want to give us a time where a few of us can come down and collect some beach? Will you be there? Yeah, I'll be there from 10.30 to 4. Um, you can't... The, you, can you up, hear me? Up the beach tree. You're spending all day at the beach tree. Yes. You can, you can come any time after 10.30 and you must be away by 4. And you're going to be there the whole time? Yes. And... Mm -hmm. Um, I've sent instructions on WhatsApp um, with a couple of ways of finding the correct coordinates. It's a bit difficult. It's a big house. It's got gates. Um, you need to stop outside, ring the bell to get the gates open, and then you come in. There's plenty of room to park. You just park up in the forecourt. You'll see. But just give me a call at the same time, and then I'll come up and meet you. Um, just there's don't lots see... of being done by the tree surgeon still. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of work on, on, the, on the trunk. Mm. And Tom and I have done a huge amount um, also. Yeah, you're showing your, your biceps there, Terry. It's a good view of the result of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my biceps. That's a pipe cleaner I use for cleaning out the chuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hmm. no, but there's lot of, a lot of wood there. Just don't hesitate to come. Uh, and don't think it's going to run out. It won't. Um, but as I can only re-emphasize, there won't be any trunk wood, it's only branch wood, but they're big branches. Mm -hmm. And it is mostly um, plain beach without much color, mostly. Yeah. Because the, the uh, colored part is, is spoken for. Well, that, that's not entirely true because here's a bowl that I made um, this week, I don't know if you can see it. And can you see in the, in the center there? Yeah. It's still a bit soaked in oil, 
but um, yeah. is that from the slice that, that was taken out from the middle? Mm. It's gone. I can see that's a bit better. Yeah. yeah. So there's plenty of colour and interest in the wood. I, I wouldn't worry about that. I've oiled it. It's uh, lemon oil, um, and mm. that works. Um, for it? those, oh sorry, sorry, I'm talking rubbish. I was showing you the apple log. This is they're both in the same barrel. This is the beach. There's the colours there. Mm -hmm. Oh lovely. What, what's the diameter there? Roughly. Uh, oh, roughly ten inches, I suppose. Mm, looks bigger. Hides me. Yeah. Well, yes, that's because. If I go further in the background, it'll look even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me see if I get a decent view of it. There, how's that? Lovely. Yeah. yeah. That's your profile. That's a nice piece. Yeah, it's nice. It turns very thin, too. This is about, what, three mil, I suppose, maybe. Yeah, three, maybe four. Um, it's obviously very wet when you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's green wood. It's absolutely dripping. Yeah. But um, it's dripping now with oil. This is uh, all lemon oil around the outside. Um, to try and make sure it, uh, it doesn't split. I think it's starting to polymerize. It'll be fine. I just need to give so it a final you, sand and then it'll be ready. You turn that green, that's it. You didn't let it dry and uh, you no. didn't rough turn it. Is there any rough? Was it rough turn before you finished Not it? Not at all. I turned straight to this, this shape. And you won't, oh. you won't, you won't crack? Well, I'll, I'll let you know, but I'm, my plan is not. No. <laughs> Last time I did one of these green, it didn't crack. Um, but um, it, because it's green, it's really friendly to turn the beach. I mean, it's, it's such lovely wood to turn. Um, it only took uh, oh, about a couple of hours to get to this. And I don't know if you, how well you can see. Let me see if I can get a bit more light on this. Uh, it's, it's like Terry's problem. You sort of lose it with the light, doesn't it? It's probably better like that. Um, yeah. Can you see the grain? See the grain really quite clearly with the oil showing it up inside. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah.